Hello, all you beautiful people. Welcome to the first session of Baiju's Class 8 Social Science. Now, today I have a piece of very exciting news for all of you. I have told all of you this before. What is this exciting news? Well, I have told you that Baiju's mini learning program is now free. So, to know how to enroll in this program, we have a link for you in the description box. Please go ahead, click it, and you will be able to avail all the facilities. Now, the great news here is that this program is actually worth Rs. 399. But if you use this magical code, YT free, you will be able to avail all of this for absolutely no cost. But, 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 please note that this offer ends on ding, 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 17th July. And we have a lot of people joining in. So what are you waiting for? Go click on the link right now, type in the code and actually get a chance to take part in and view all these excellent sessions. Now, some people may ask, what are the advantages? So, let me tell you why you should enroll in this program. So, in this program, you will get a very special two-teacher advantage. Not just that, apart from this, you will also have one-on-one -on -one guidance from a personal mentor. Isn't that cool? Super guidance. Then, apart from this, you will have a lot of live interactive classes, which I know that all of you absolutely love. And apart from this, there's more. You will have fun and insightful after-class assignments and assessments, which will help you to practice, practice, practice. And you know what the best part of all of this is? is the best part of all of this is that you can schedule these classes purely at your own convenience. So you can watch it after school, you can watch it after you finish uh, playing, basically you can watch it whenever you want. So what are you waiting for? Just go ahead and click on the link given in the description box below. All right, now let us start with our session once again. Welcome to another exciting session of Baiju Social Science Classes. Today, we are going to study a very interesting and a very vital part of governing our country. What are we going to learn about? Well, yes, we are going to learn about our constitution. So, shall we get started? Okay. Now, we know that India was ruled by the British for a very, very long time. And then we finally got our freedom, right? So, obviously, gaining independence was a very important feat for our country. But, you know, that wasn't enough. Our country also needed capable hands to run it. So, then we had a wise and a capable guide who took up this very daunting and difficult task. Do you know who this guide was? Ta-da! It was our constitution. So, in this session, we will be learning about the definition of a constitution. Then we will go ahead and talk about why we need a constitution. And then we will go ahead and understand the purposes of a constitution. So, shall we get started? Let's do that. Now, let's first start by understanding what a constitution is. Can you think about it and tell me? Do you know what a constitution is? Okay, let me tell you. A constitution is the basic rule book of a country. What do I mean by this? This rule book contains details on how to govern our country, which is a very important task, right? It also lists down the rights and the duties of the citizens, which we know again is very, very important, right? So, I have a question. This is very important. So, does this mean that every country in the world has a constitution? What do you think? Well, yes. Almost all countries have a constitution of some sort that outlines the government structure. But, 
a very important point to take note of over here is that although all democratic countries are likely to have a constitution, it is not necessary that all countries that have a constitution are democratic in nature. <laughs> all right. Let me explain what I mean by this. Okay, let's take the example of the Chinese constitution. Now, the Chinese constitution clearly states that it is a one-party socialist republic country. Whereas India, on the other hand, is a democracy. So, you see, it is not necessary for all constitutions to be democratic in nature. Clear? All right. Now we know what a constitution is. But why does a country need a constitution in the first place? Any thoughts? Okay. Let's understand this better with an example. Just imagine that um, there are no rules in your school. Mm. What do you think will be the outcome? <laughs> we know what will happen if there are no rules. Students are going to keep making a lot of noise in the class. They'll uh, probably be playing all the time. They'll definitely be absent from school regularly. And they will probably not even let the teacher conduct the classes. Correct? And you know, not just that. In a school, we know that there would naturally be students from different backgrounds. For example, different religious beliefs or languages or cultures or even hobbies, right? So, in the absence of rules, students of certain groups might end up discriminating others and some will probably gain more benefits and others will remain neglected, right? So, basically, there would be chaos. So, what should be done? Obviously, there needs to be a set of basic rules that everyone has to follow so that some peace can be maintained, right? Ah, so in the same way, our country is also very diverse and needs a set of basic rules. Now, talking about diversity, if you think about our country, India, we have how many states do we have? We have 29 states. We have seven union territories. We have uh, uh, 22 constitutionally recognized languages and, and so many different types of religions. So obviously in such a country, it's not possible to escape from the impact of the people being so different. Basically the impact of its diversity, right? Whether it's in terms of um, politics or technology or education or even deve development for the other, on the other hand, I mean, right? So this is where a constitution comes into the picture. A constitution sets rules and laws that everyone needs to follow irrespective of what their beliefs are. Once again, set rules and laws agreed upon by all persons in a country. Very, very important, right? Now, we've understood why we need a constitution, but this brings us to a larger question. What are the purposes of a constitution? Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you, a constitution actually serves several purposes. So many. Do you know what they are? Okay, let's go through them one by one. Firstly, the constitution lays out certain ideals that guides how a country needs to function. So this includes decisions like, for example, the uh, type of government. I'm putting this down over here for you. Also, for example, the primary aim of that government, right? So uh, how do I explain this better? Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, if we take the constitution of the USA, right? Now the constitution of the USA starts with the three words, we the people. These words, we the people, emphasize that the main idea that this constitution upholds is that the government of the United States exists to serve its citizens. Right? Okay, so this is what we mean by it. Define the ideals of a country. Let's move on to the second purpose. The second purpose of a constitution is to define the nature of the country's political system. Again, example, if you take the example of our Indian constitution, our Indian constitution states that it has a democratic system with elected representatives. So as a democracy, our constitution has given us the right to choose our leaders so that they can exercise power responsibly on our behalf. 
Clear? Okay. Let's move on to the third point. The third point is that a constitution should have provisions to prevent elected leaders from misusing their power. What do I mean by this? Okay, again, example. When it comes to our country's constitution, okay, our country, uh, our country's constitution has a provision for three organs of government. What are the three organs that we have? You can say it along with me while I write it. We have the legislature, we have the executive, yes, and then we have, as we know, the judiciary. These are the three organs of the government. Now, we know that these three organs have separate powers and maintain a check on each other. So, what does this do for us? This prevents misuse of power by elected leaders in our country. So, isn't this a great provision? Right? So, this is a very, very important point. Then, let's move on to the fourth purpose of a constitution. The fourth purpose of a constitution is to introduce provisions to protect the rights of the minority groups in a country. For example, if you take our Indian constitution, our Indian constitution ensures that any linguistic or religious minority, they have the right to practice their own distinct language, their religion or the culture that they have. And they have the right to conserve the same. Right? Okay, why is this needed exactly? Well, if you think about it, it really is important to protect the minorities of a country so that we don't have a dominant group that will use its power against the other, right? So you, otherwise we would have more dominant groups using their power against less powerful people or groups, right? And we definitely don't want this situation to come up, correct? Then we have the fifth point, which says that a constitution saves us from ourselves. Whoa, deep. <laughs> Strange thing to say, but it's very true. Now, do you know what this means? Let me explain. A constitution saves us from making wrong decisions. One minute, let me put this down for you. For making wrong decisions, right? What do I mean by wrong decisions? I mean that it stops us from making wrong decisions that would affect the larger principles that the country believes in. For instance, uh, now we are a democracy, right? Suddenly, if tomorrow we wake up and we feel that our country needs to be ruled by a dictator and should not be a democracy anymore, would you think, do you think that would be a good idea? No, right? So a good constitution will not allow us, will not let us do so. It does not let anyone easily overthrow its provisions that guarantees the rights of citizens and protects their freedom. So in that sense, it saves us from ourselves. Now, isn't this so cool? Super cool. In fact, so many purposes. Now, let me uh, show you an example for us to understand how the constitution is vital for a country. So let's take the case study and talk about Nepal, which we know is our neighboring country. Now, in the case of Nepal, the first constitution that was adopted in Nepal in 1990 stated that the country is a monarchy. What do we mean by the word monarchy? We mean that it is ruled by a king. Wait, let me write this down for you a little neater. Monarchy. Right? It's ruled by a king, basically. So, obviously, though this type of constitution had certain provisions of democracy, the constitution stated that the final authority lies with the Nepalese king, who was uh, Birendra Bir Bikram Shah Dev. Right? Now, this constitutional monarchy lasted for 12 years until 2002. Until we had King Birendra's successor, King Gyanendra, uh, who started taking over different aspects of the government with the army's assistance and he became the head of the government. Now, however, the people uh, soon started to not like and resent this type of government. So this eventually led to a movement by the people of Nepal for a democracy. So can you guess what happened after that? Well, then in 2006, we had the 
people's movement of nepal that ended the power of the king okay we'll just put over here ended power of king right and then we had democ democracy that was established so after that the people of nepal realized that they needed a new constitution that reflected their ideals so in 2015 nepal adopted a new constitution and declared its wait let me put this down constitution and declared its country as a democracy right so today in currently nepal has a president as head of state and it has a prime minister heading the government hmm? So you see how things changed. So, what did we learn from the example of Nepal? Well, we learned that it is really important for a country to have a well-defined political system that reflects the ideals of its people, right? And the best way to attain these is by having a constitution that serves the purposes that we discussed before, right? So now, it was quite an intense session. Let's quickly recap what we've learned today. We learned the definition of the constitution, of a constitution. We understood why we need a constitution in the first place. And then we also spoke about and we understood the different purposes of a constitution. Clear? Now, let me ask you something interesting. It's question time. Can you tell me how our Indian constitution stands out from the constitutions of other countries. In other words, I want you to tell me what features makes the Indian constitution unique. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below. I will be waiting for your answers. And we have reached the end of our session today. So for more such videos, tune into Baiju's 9th, 10th channel and definitely do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. I'm going to see you really soon in our next session. Bye-bye.